If your user needs to fill in multiple fields or a series of steps, then a stepper is a good way to accomplish that. So in this tutorial, we'll go over how we can create this stepper right here. So stay tuned. Get a free full month of Skillshare and stream more than 18,000 online classes on subjects like design, business and tech. After a while and you feel like this isn't for you, you can always cancel a subscription and not pay anything. So don't wait, try it out now. The link is in the description. So first off, we have to create a variable, which will be the current step variable. I will default that to zero. So why will it default it to zero? Because the steps we are going to show on the, the application will be a list of steps. So zero will just indicate the first item of the list. So inside the scaffold, we can go to body and we will return something. So in this, we will return a stepper. Uh, which requires steps. So first off, we will just create our method, which will be a list of step, and just call it my steps. Uh, so because we are returning a list of steps, just let's just create the the list. So what this requires, let's just return this also so we don't forget that. So let's return steps. So right now we don't have any item. So if I, my steps, so if we do it like this, it will be nothing because we don't have set any steps or have any current step, right? So we can see if we can set the current step will be the the current set variable, current step variable. Uh, the problem with this is it will probably not run still because we don't have any index in our list. So let's just create our first step. So what this step will have is a title. It will have content and we will also have a is active. So just because this is an example, we will just write step one. We have a empty text field. And here we can check if the current step is more than or equals to zero. Just to say, see if it's true or not. So if we run this, we can see that we have our first step. But we don't have any continue or any other steps. So let's just add two more steps with the name there and just change this to also. So if we update this again, we can see that we have uh, two more steps. Um, so first off, we can't press the continue or console button uh, because we don't have any logic for that yet. So let's see if we can change that. So inside the stepper, we will have a on step tapped, which we will just call step. So what this will do is that we can set the state of that step. So this will just set our current step right here to the step that we have uh, uh, pressed on. So if we run this, we can see that if we press on step three, we continue to that. Uh, so next thing is the continue and cancel. So let's go with the continue first. So on step, that's not inside the stepper. So on step continue. So we both have on step console and on step continue. So let's just do on step continue first. So what this will do is that we will have an anonymous function inside here. And we can set the state. So inside this set state, we will check if this dot current step is less than uh, the length of our list of steps minus one. 
So inside here now we can call our current step and we will set that to our current step again plus one. And we can check also else. So this will be the place there where we complete the steps or where we are at the bottom. bottom. So logic to check if everything is completed. We can also do a print here just to show. There we go. So if we run this again, we can go to the bottom and if we check the run, completed check fields. Uh, so the next step will be if we cancel. So if we create, uh, press this cancel button, we need to go back up again. So go back a step. So we create a new anonymous function. So you can have functions for this, uh, like this we did right here. So on step continue or on step cancel. I just create a anonymous function just to make it more clear uh, for this tutorial. So here we have a set state again and we will check if this current step is more than zero. So this will just check so that we can't press cancel if we are on step zero. So we will call our current step and we will do the same as before, just subtract subtract one instead. And if we are on step zero, we will just in case set that to zero. So if we run this, we can see that if we press continue and get to the bottom, it will print completed check fields. And if we go back again, we can't go back more than to that first um, step. So I hope this tutorial helps you. I want to cover how we can check the field. I have a tutorial on form fields and you can also check the fields independent with a text field controller or a text editing controller. Uh, I hope you like this tutorial. If you do, please subscribe to the channel and leave a like and let me know if this helped you. And I will see you in the next tutorial.